Fat Burger. Now, if you grew up in Southern California in or near the Los Angeles area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. What's known today for the Big Juicy Burgers, the Triple X King Challenge, and everybody wants their picture on that wall of fame, was once the L.A. only burger stand. And today I'm going to talk about how it was founded, when it was founded, and who actually founded it in South Central Los Angeles. So check out this video and learn about all about the history of Fat Burger. Fat Burger, which started off as the name Mr. Fat Burger in 1947, was found and discovered by Lovey Yancey, a black woman. She started selling these burgers off of Western Avenue in South Central outside of her garage. Her and her boyfriend slash business partner got scrap metal and converted the garage into a hamburger stand. Now as that relationship went sour in 1952, she decided to drop the mister and just call it Fat Burger. Now Fat Burger started to do so well in Florida, she opened up a second location in Beverly Hills. The Beverly Hills location started to attract Hollywood acts and stars such as Ray Charles and Red Fox. Now as Fat Burger started to become an LA phenomenon and spread around the city's inner cities and communities, all the way up until 1990, Lovey Yancey decided to sell her chain for $3 million as she was older at the age of 78 years old. But at this time in the 90s, it was such a big thing, rappers and all types of celebrities would always shout out Fat Burger. No helicopter looking for murder, two in the morning got the Fat Burger. Now with California, it's spreading like a wildfire with Fat Burgers, such as celebrities like Biggie Smalls mentioned in his songs, Magic Johnson, Queen Latifah. For Will Williams, Kanye West, just to name a few who decided to open up their own fat burgers chains as it started to become a big food chain. Now, E-40 was the first rapper decided to try to open in Northern California in the Bay Area. Seven years, B. I'm proud of you. We all proud of you, man. Uh, it's so important. Like, people got to understand uh, diversity, you know, in the yeah. business place. And when we talk about all the shit going on now with systemic racism we talking about how hard it is for a black man or a brown man to go and get a loan to open a business or you ever had situations like that where you try to go to the bank to get a loan and it, it was yeah. different for you yeah i definitely had I, didn't have, I had a case like that and um so i had a clothing i mean not a clothing store i'm sorry that was way many years ago i had a um i had a fat burger me and uh, chester mclaughlin r.i.p chester mclaughlin that was we were business partners 2008, um, the recession kicked in, around 2007, 2008. And, uh, you know, we had it up and running for like three years. We had to let it go. RIP to Chester McLaughlin, too. You know what I'm saying? He passed away a few years ago. Great man, solid dude. Uh, and I send my uh, love to his family, his wife, Zena, and everybody, you know. But Chester was like, you know, one of those good dudes, man. And he he, he had the ideal first, like, you know, I'm doing these fat burgers. I'm going to do 10 of them. You want to come in with me? Let's go half and half. So we went half. So in the meantime, I had already put in motion a, um, a wing stop, and it was going to be in Venetia, California, right by the Rayleigh's. I had got the I've gotten a five year lease, the whole woo wop. I paid cash for my half with Fat Burger, right? So I was like, you know what? I can't. I'm not supposed to do this. I got to think like they think. You know what I mean? The others. You feel me? I said, I got. I'm supposed to be, you know, trying to get a loan, good credit, everything. Try to get a loan. I had to leave it alone before I got too deep into it because, you know, it cost a million just to build it out back then, just to build it out. You know what I'm saying? And I, and you and it, it don't make good business sense to spend your own money like that. You know, you, you work off other people's money when it comes to something like that. Then, you know, you get a loan. And you ask, you now, Adam Wanderhorn was the CEO of Fat Burger in 2008 and decided to take the franchising to another level internationally and rapidly through state to state. Fat Burger and where it's going, uh, how big is the international market? It's gigantic. I mean, we are more than 50% international today, again, in 27 countries, and more than half our units are overseas now in the Middle East, Asia, uh, in Canada. We're everywhere like that. And, and you know, there's a, they love American products, American burger shakes and fries, and the franchise system works well in that environment. Why the name, what? though, Fat Burger? Yes. I mean, you know, certainly everybody's trying to eat a burger without getting fat. You know, why that name? Well, so this. 
brand started in the 1950s in Los Angeles in South Central LA by a black woman named Levy Yancey in front of her house cooking burgers. And it really meant big, juicy, tasty. It wasn't about fattening. Our beef is actually some of the leanest beef you can get yeah. as a hamburger. I can give you one other answer. We remember fat burger. We do. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you say swear it's burger. better than in and out burger. For I don't sure. know. You have Andy. to have one. You have to have okay. one. Okay. I can't wait. Now, in 2010, Fat Burger took it to another level with opening up its first Las Vegas location located off the Las Vegas Strip. This was a Fat Burger slash Fat Bar. Now, I remember going to this place when it first opened thinking, man, they got slushies, beer, liquor, everything you can think of. I was thinking Fat Burger's really taking it to another level with this one. Shortly, it spread all through Nevada, spreading through Arizona as well, opening up its first fat burger inside of the Chase Field Stadium for the Diamondback baseball team. Now, most of the locations still being in California, about 62%, and then the other locations being still on the West Coast, it was safe to say fat burger was still a Los Angeles and California thing. Which takes me to the next thing in 2014 when rapper Nipsey Hussle teamed up with Fat Burger to open up its location off of Crenshaw and Slauson. Right now we standing on Crenshaw and Slauson in the Crenshaw district area I grew up in. Fat Burger being an iconic brand in LA, you know our core values kind of aligned. We had an idea to co-brand the Crenshaw collection from the Marathon clothing with the Fat Burger logo. The brands represent Los Angeles. It was just some organic and natural that felt right. The Fat Burger logo, you know, it's like the Hollywood sign, or it's like something that you come to LA, you think of Los Angeles. So um, we didn't want to get in the way of that. You know, we just wanted to, you know, uh, represent the area and also our Crenshaw collection. The Crenshaw logo is becoming iconic in Los Angeles and it's starting to mean, you know, more than just the area. It's rich in history, it's rich in culture. And so, you know, I think that a lot of the city and a lot of the country look at us as ambassadors to this area. You know, in, in, in the business world, in the music world, nobody really put a, a flag in the Crenshaw and Slauson area before us. You know what I mean? So I think that it made sense to Fat Burger to reach out. I think that we did a great design. Everybody inside, they whole staff was wearing it, and it just looked dope. And it also gave them a little bit of cool factor because it's kids that grow up in this area. It's people that come from this area that when they walk in, they're going to be like, oh, that's what's up. You know, that's, that's tight that you got to tell your finger on a post like that to be, you know, in a structure like... Fat Burger in an office somewhere and to understand the significance of the brand. Wow, it's a trip just to think that all that started just off of a woman cooking good hamburgers outside of her garage. Now, Lovey Yancey did sell the rights in 1990, like I mentioned earlier, but she held on to rights to the original location in 2007, where she eventually sold to a group of investors. Now, part of the agreement was that the original Fat Burger would never be torn down. But they did build low income housing and keep the square footage with a plaque and a nice moral of Love Yancey. Now, with this video, I just wanted to mention with it being Black History Month, I don't really do the Black History Month thing. I think that a Black History is American history. But I just wanted to give some people some facts and uh, show them an inspirational story about entrepreneurship and what you can be doing and you don't have to be limited. Um, closing this video out, anybody that's in the California, Southern California area, how do you feel about fat burgers spreading across from state to state internationally? It's a good thing to see fat burger grow and everybody be able to experience it, but it doesn't feel quite like the 90s taking those trips to LA and only being in Los Angeles. A lot of people don't understand that fat burger was the stamp of Los Angeles. You knew you were in Los Angeles when you were at fat burger. But uh, let me know in the comments how you feel if you grew up in the Los Angeles area going to Fat Burger.